today I'm going to explain to you um, how I hooked up a legacy CTALK network, CTALK1, which is a daisy chain network, to a CTALK NG network to a NEMA network. And that allowed me to connect my legacy Raymarine devices, old Ray Raymarine devices, with um, newer chart plotter, Garmin chart plotter, brand new chart plotter, and a Vesper AIS. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Mary Beth, and this is Steven. Together we are sailing through life on our sailboat Harmony with our dog Bernie. Join our adventures as we explore the East Coast and beyond by subscribing to our channel. I created a, a schematic for how I discovered how the network was and how I wanted it to be. Over here is all legacy stuff. So there's the old CTALK plugs. These were the old CTALK network. I've got my depth, I've got my speed, and that's plugged into uh, an SD80. Um, that goes up to a plug up here, and those plugs connect to the CTALK NG network. They also plug into my autopilot. They also plug into my wind instruments. Um, and then up here are my wind instruments. Do, 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 wind X. And then over here, this is where you connect to the NEMA. You just run a spur. So basically, you're able to continue the network. So you have the network over here with a, termina with a terminating uh, resistor. And then on the other side, you have another one over here. So you're basically connecting the networks that way. And that enabled me to connect my AIS, which is brand new, my Garmin chart plotter, which is brand new. Um, yeah. The existing network is down here. It was an existing, very small, isolated NEMA backbone, which is about this long, <laughs> um, which connected uh, a GPS, Garmin GPS, which is still here, a GPS antenna, and a legacy Garmin chart plotter, which was up at the helm. So what we did is we extended that NEMA backbone to the nav station. This right here is the backbone, and I extended this with a cable that goes all the way back to the nav station. NEMA is great because you just uh, have a backbone with what they call back here, you can't really see it, but there's something on either end of the backbone uh, you need to have a terminating resistor, a terminal resistor, and then you have these little spurs off it, like here and here. This is the power, actually. This powers the network. And then this one goes to the GPS, and this one right here goes to the Garmin up at the helm right here to this Garmin, and it also splits to this as well. We put a splitter in, which uh, I didn't think you could do, but it worked. Uh, so what I did is I decided to take that legacy system, which was CTALK1, uh, which is the old square connections, and I was able to take those connections, and there's say a converter that allows you to connect that legacy CTALK network to the new CTALK NG network. So we did that, and I'll show you down below. And then from there, um, all the CTALK uh, items would talk to each other, which they did anyway, but they were, they were an updated network. And what that enabled me to do is take that CTALK NG network and connect it to the NEMA network, which allowed all the CTALK instruments, so all the legacy uh, Raymarine instruments, to communicate with the Garmin new GPS, which is on NEMA, and the Garmin multi-unit device, and also a Vesper Cortex AIS, which we installed. Okay, let's go down below. Behind here is my CTALK1 network. This is the new CTALK NG network and backbone. And what we did is I connected that to the legacy one, which they're all daisy chained together. That's these guys right here. And it connects into here, this one. And then from there, it goes over to through here. It connects to here. That's the NEMA, um, the end of the NEMA backbone from the from the uh, Lazarette, which I showed you before. There's that long cable and it terminates right here. So that allows everybody to talk together and be happy. I was thinking about disassembling all the legacy, um, the network and, and the equipment and stuff like that. 
And I'm glad I didn't do it. For one, it was be expensive and I didn't want to go up the mast. <laughs> but I'm glad I didn't do it because of um, the fact of redundancy. Both these networks are powered independently. So if I lose power on my NEMA network, um, I'd lose the chart plotter. I'll still have my wind instruments. I'll still have my VHF. I'll still have my depth. I'll still have my speed. So I could do something called dead reckoning. Even though you have all this you know, high tech computer equipment and, and chart plotters and AIS and things like that. Sure, they make your life a lot easier in some ways, but it's but this stuff can fail, especially like out in the ocean. It's a harsh environment. There's salt, there's spray, there's pounding. Things fail. And so you should always think about having redundancy on a boat. The two pieces of redundancy I just talked about are the two separate networks, the NEMA network and the legacy SeaTalk network. They're powered independently. Uh, though they talk to each other. So if one goes down, I still have the other. So a big shout out to Mosley Marine and Power. Andrew Mosley and Hannah were great to work with. Excellent company. Um, I couldn't have done it without them. So thank you. Thanks for watching. I hope this was valuable for you. Like and subscribe if you like videos like this. I like doing them. Uh, they're, they're fun. I like working on the boat. And as I learn things about the boat, I'd be happy to share them with you. So bye.